resources used to create this essay, Leopold Aschenbrenner's Situational Awareness series, and Leopold's conversation with Dorkesh. This is a two-part essay. AI will probably steal your job sooner than you think, and why it might not matter. Quick story time. Ned Ludd was a skilled weaver from Nottingham, England. He spent long hours weaving intricate patterns and creating beautiful fabrics, taking great pride in his work. One fateful day, early 1800s, at Ned's countryside factory, a new mechanical loom was installed. The factory owner boasted the machine could weave faster and more efficiently than a hundred human workers combined. Ned knew that this machine threatened not only his livelihood, but the very essence of his craft. In a fit of rage, he grabbed a sledgehammer and marched toward the mechanical beast. With several mighty swings, he smashed the hammer through the gears of the loom until it was no more than scrap metal. Nobody knows if Ned actually existed. Regardless, he was the mythical face of the Luddite movement. So while Ned is a myth, the Luddites were not. They're actually a group of textile workers who protested against the introduction of mechanized looms and knitting frames. They resorted to destroying the new machinery in an attempt to protect their jobs. The British government eventually suppressed the movement and mechanization continued to spread, significantly altering the textile industry. Luddite is now a blanket term we use to describe people, usually old people, who hate new technologies. People will worship AI as a god. AI, Ted Kaczynski was likely right, will get away from us. We will be controlled by the thing that we made. All those are bad. Like that's just bad. And we need to say unequivocally, it's bad. It's bad to be controlled by machines. Right. Machines are helpmates. Like they, we created them to help us to make our lives better, not to take orders from them. Um, so I, I don't know why we're not having any of these conversations right now. We're just acting as if this is like some kind of virus like COVID that just spreads across the world inexorably. There's nothing we can do about it. Just wait to get it. It's like, no. If we agree that the outcome is bad, which and specifically it's bad for people, we should care what's good for people. That's all we should care about. Is it good for people or not? If it's bad for people, then we should strangle it in its crib right now. <laughs> right. And one is blow up the data centers. Like There's an argument to be made here that Tucker and the Luddites, even the Amish, are all justified in their concerns over technological progress. So algorithmic burger flipping. Almost everyone I know spends most of their time and energy in some capacity worrying about a job or an imaginary bank balance, or both. So whether they openly admit to hating the job, pretend to enjoy it, or tolerate it as a means to an end, whether they're on the admirable hustle to converting passion into paycheck or having fully actualized in the realm of doing what they love. The reality is we all have a very strange relationship with jobs, with money, and with meaning. So it's quite natural that when people hear about growing influence of artificial intelligence, their initial thoughts drift straight to, well, how is this going to impact me, my job, my work? If we wind back the clock, just five or so years, AI job displacement fear was directed toward mechanical work. Truck drivers, cashiers, customer service reps, fast food workers. The proverbial burger flipper served as the metaphor for the simplest of low skill tasks. This story was banking on an initial development of artificial intelligence in the form of robotics or integration into the physical world. Then a few years ago, the story took an interesting turn. With rapid and unexpected improvements in NLP, natural language processing, models like ChatGPT were suddenly able to complete tasks we'd consider higher cognition. Content creation, data analysis, even medical diagnosis. So there's still some debate around which careers will be the first to the chopping block and how we monkeys are gonna play a role, but it's clear that we are now in the early stages of a major shift in work and job displacement. In the future, a human won't be flipping your quarter pounder patty at Mickey D's. In the future, you'll receive very little, if any, medical diagnoses from a human doctor. The point of interest is no longer if it's possible, it's the when and the how. To be very blunt, it's possible that the when comes way sooner than most people are pricing in, 
and if it comes way sooner, shit is going to get real weird and real uncomfortable and there will be challenges way bigger than losing your job. Increasingly efficient, narrow artificial intelligence, i.e. something that can flip a burger or detect a tumour, might take a few jobs, but it's not going to turn the world upside down. Artificial intelligence is already flipping burgers and offering medical diagnoses. Things start getting really interesting as we approach increasingly general and superhuman level intelligence. At this point, not only do most people lose their jobs, but the entire economy gets restructured. There's a select number of people working, on, working at the leading AI labs, most of whom exist in a small San Francisco bubble that are very aware of the rapid trajectory of artificial intelligence. An even smaller number of them are starting to publicly share the broader implications and concerns of this progress. The AI arms race and situational awareness. So Leopold Aschenbrenner is a very, very interesting 23-year-old. Graduated from Columbia University at 19, published award-winning papers on economic theory and existential risk, uh, catching the attention of prolific economists, writers, thinkers like Tyler Cohen, who encouraged him to pursue a non-traditional academic path. This led Leopold to a recent hiring and then firing from OpenAI for reportedly leaking sensitive information. From Leopold's side, the sensitive information in question was a Google Doc he created to share some high-level concerns about the future and security of AGI. Without going too far into the politics, there is some suggestion that OpenAI's shift in focus towards rapid growth and deployment have come at the expense of safety and alignment. Last week, Leopold published Situational Awareness. The series unpacks and explains that we are on a very steep trajectory toward the creation of superintelligence and that very few people have recognized or prepared for what might unfold. I've listened to his conversation on the Dwarkesh podcast and I'm now working my way through the essay series. I'm just going to read a short quote from the introduction. The AGI race has begun. We're building machines that can think and reason. By 2025, 26, these machines will outpace many college graduates. By the end of the decade, they will be smarter than you or I. We will have superintelligence in the true sense of the word. Along the way, national security forces not seen in half a century will be unleashed, and before long, the project will be on. If we're lucky, we'll be in an all-out race with the CCP. If we're unlucky, an all-out war. Everyone is now talking about AI, but few have the faintest glimmer of what is about to hit them. So in the series and in the conversation with Dwarkesh, he outlines a very convincing trajectory for how and why things will potentially progress much faster over the coming years than people expect. In the next essay, I'm going to share and simplify a few of the big insights from the paper and the conversation to help people make sense of the magnitude. While there's certainly some bottlenecks and open questions, there is a tsunami-powered tailwind up the arse end of progress toward AGI and superintelligence meaning there's a good chance things are going to get weird way sooner than most people are expecting. You know, I don't like it. You know, I wish I wish the thing we use the ASI for is to like, you know, cure the diseases and do all the good in the world. But it is my prediction that sort of like by the in the end game, what will be at stake will not just be kind of cool products, but what will be at stake is like, whether liberal democracy survives, like whether the CCP survives, like what the world order for the next century will be. And when that is at stake, forces will be activated that are sort of way beyond what we're talking about now. And 